It's very rare these days that I walk into a game shop and spot a game that I've not at least seen on the coming soon page of the Nintendo eShop, but that's exactly what happened this weekend when I saw Demon Throttle on the shelves of my local game. This fact, coupled with the box art, was enough for me to blind buy the game, remember when that was your only option back in the day, and having looked it up when I got home, I discovered that this is a physical only game and won't ever be on the eShop. This piqued my interest enough to review it, so is Demon Throttle worth getting physical over? Well, let's find out. So Demon Throttle is developed by Doinksoft and published by Devolver Digital and Special Reserve Games. As I mentioned in the intro, the decision has been made to not release this game digitally on the eShop and instead keep it as a physical only exclusive, as you can see the box makes reference to this within its artwork. Now as far as I understand, when first announced it was stated that the game would release via Special Reserve Games website, which is standard procedure for Devolver Digital published games, with a limited edition that comes with a number of extras, such as a manual and stickers, as well as a numbered case of course, but a standard release has followed, which is the one that I've got, and whilst listed as a game exclusive over here in the UK, it appears to also be available on various other websites. The story of the game is of little consequence, but it tells the tale of a vampire whose chalices are stolen by a mysterious demon, and a gunslinger whose wife is kissed, as he puts it, I think you might be in denial there mate, by the same demon. They then join forces to take the demon down. So let's move on to the gameplay itself then, and Demon Throttle is a top-down shooter, very similar in some respects to games such as King's Knight, Ikari Warriors or Commando, and it also reminded me, in terms of gameplay style at least, certainly not in terms of quality, of the X-Men game on the NES. You can play in either single player or local co-op, and must make your way upwards whilst the screen constantly scrolls, taking out a host of enemies and being sure not to allow yourself to become trapped in a dead end by the advancement of that scrolling screen. Bullets come towards you thick and fast, and it does have a sort of bullet hell shooter quality to it at times, but owing to the fact that you are on foot and you aren't obviously a spaceship of any description, you can jump over the bullet patterns, which does lead to a nice rhythmic quality when you start to get into the swing of things. There are only four levels, and this game adopts the style found frequently in NES games of masking its short length with a pretty brutal difficulty level. You have just one life, and when it's gone, it's game over and back to the start. If you are playing in single player, then you get the one life for both characters, essentially giving you two lives of course, but make no mistake, this is a game where you'll be starting again often. Whilst I don't necessarily think this gameplay method holds up well these days, I will say that the gameplay is genuinely fun, and having died constantly on level 1, after about half an hour I could beat this stage without being hit, so it definitely has that rewarding quality where you want to get better and keep trying, and frustration didn't once set in whilst I played. There is absolutely no procedural generation to things at all, down to the power-ups you find being in the exact same place on every run, which means you can start to play by rote, knowing exactly where a health pickup will be if you get hit for example, which again bleeds into that old school style of learning games by heart to get the most out of them. There is a bit of depth to its mechanics in that every enemy you kill earns you experience points and your character can level up as you play which will make their weapon more powerful. Some of the power ups will also add to your character's stats such as with speed or luck and each character is slightly different and what I liked about it was that you could switch between them on the fly by pressing the X button, making sure they were both stocked up with bombs, keeping their health replenished as you went along and then using their respective bombs on the boss to ensure that you got through each one. This was also a good way of making sure that the XP that you were collecting stayed fairly balanced between your two characters. This is different in co-op mode of course where you take on a role each, and co-op is a fantastic way to play, especially if playing with someone of a similar skill level where you can really start to make some progress. Each level ends with a boss fight and there is also a hidden chalice to find on each stage, which from what I've heard is the only way to get the true ending. Controls are simple and easy to get to grips with, although there is no way in-game to configure the buttons or even just read which button does what, which may lead to a few bombs being wasted on your first couple of runs whilst you figure them out. Demon Throttle is unapologetically old school, which leads to a lot of positives, but a few old bugbears rear their head at the same time. It's certainly a lot of fun though if you are on board with the premise and gameplay gets 17 out of 20. Controls are simple and do the job, and they also get 17 out of 20. 
In terms of the visuals, Demon Throttle uses pixel art and really does get the NES style just about spot on. It's a modern interpretation of the NES style of course, with a much more robust and varied colour palette and a really good use of a CRT filter which adds a lot to the experience as far as I was concerned. As much as I was an 80s child, I usually turn off such filters these days, but found myself playing with this one on for the duration. That said though, when the filter is off, things look lovely and crisp, and this is also a great way to play. Character models are fair considering the size of them on screen, although a little more variety in enemies would have been appreciated. Audio is appropriate in terms of the on-screen action, with some limited voice acting at times, which has an early arcade quality to it, which makes for a nice modern blend of old home console and arcade features. The classic chiptune sounds are great to listen to, and although the bullet sound effects are perhaps a little too loud in comparison, there is the option to turn one down separately from the other in the menu. Visuals take that old school 8-bit style and inject more colour than would ever have been possible back in the day, and they get 16 out of 20. Audio sets the mood and complements the late 80s style the game was going for, and it gets 15 out of 20. Now usually during the value section we look at the eShop price and select a few regional equivalents, but as mentioned at the start, this game is not, and if all concerns stick to their guns, will not ever be available on the eShop. This makes this a very difficult section to score, and I thought it would be a good time to discuss the practice of physical-only releases. Now even as a staunch physical collector, I struggle to see the benefit of this endeavour. A digital release will never decrease the value of a physical game, and I don't really see how denying a digital release assists with game preservation, which is why I love physical games so much. As long as there was a physical release, and clearly there is, then surely a digital edition could have coexisted quite happily. That aside though, I must admit seeing a game on the shelf in a store that I had never heard of or seen on the eShop was a rare treat and I was eager to pick it up for that reason alone, but the price of around £27 to £29.99, depending on where you're looking, is too much for what you're getting, even if the game itself is actually a lot of fun, because ultimately there's only about an hour's worth of content, if you're good enough of course, but it will take most people a good few hours more to see that full hour, if that makes sense. The fact there is a standard physical release will hopefully mean that it won't fall into the hands of the secondary market and perhaps this version will drop in price in stores over time. I am happy to have purchased it as I love these sort of games but my recommendation would have been on a wait for a sale basis and with no eShop version this is of course not possible. Very hard to score this section as I'm sure you will appreciate but on balance value gets 7 out of 20. To conclude, I honestly thought the days of physical only releases were a thing of the past and as much as I love collecting physical games, perhaps it should be. That being said, that doesn't detract from the quality of the game itself, which is actually a very fun time and a great throwback to the top down co-op shooters with sky high difficulty levels hiding what is essentially a short game. Even when going back to the start after just one life I was compelled to keep trying and it's the very epitome of a modern day NES game that will find an audience with fewer people due to its sale practice. If you like to build a physical collection based just as much on the rarity of games as you do the quality or you like releases that have some sort of unique quirk to them then this one may well be worth tracking down but I don't see what harm a digital release would have done alongside the physical of course as it means fewer people will get to play what is actually a very good game. Demon Throttle gets a switch up score of 72%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Have you picked this one up? Had you even heard of it? What are your views on physical only releases in 2022? Please do let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit, not that it will do you any good for this game, but you can buy your eShop cards from our website switchup.gg, use the code switchup to get 10% off of your order, and if you are looking to import any games, there is a code down there to play Asia. Again, use the link, use the code, and you'll get yourself 5% off of an order from there. A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.